So in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the inverse of a square root function. So remember that inverse functions are opposites. The operations in an inverse function will always undo the operations in the original function. The inverse of a function can be found by switching the x and y values and solving for y. So you can notice here that f of x equals x squared and f inverse of x equals the square root of x are inverse functions because this square root is going to undo the square that's here. So notice that these operations are actually opposite. So remember, we also need to consider domain restrictions, and that's because the inverse of a square root function will always be a quadratic function. But remember, we have to restrict the domain of the quadratic function like we discussed. So to find and verify inverses, remember we need to replace f of x with y and then switch x and y. And then we're going to solve for y using inverse operations and think about any domain restrictions. So one very important thing to keep in mind is the inverse operations when we're undoing a square. Remember that the opposite of a square is always going to be to find the square root. And this is going to be a very important idea throughout this unit. So let's go ahead and graph the function f of x equals the square root of x plus 1 and determine the domain and range. So the domain you can see for this function, and you can double check in Desmos, it's going to start off at negative 1 and then go to positive infinity. The range you can see is going to start off at 0. So we have 0 and then it goes up to positive infinity. So now let's find the inverse of this function. So remember to find the inverse, I'm going to start off by replacing f of x with y. So we have y equals the square root of x plus 1. The next step is going to be to switch x and y, so we have x equals the square root of y plus 1. So now we're going to work on getting y by itself. So in order to do that, we're going to undo that square root by squaring both sides. So when we square both sides, we're going to get x squared, and then now that square root is going to go away, so we have y plus 1. So now we need to work on getting that y by itself. In order to get y by itself, we're going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. So when we subtract 1 from both sides, we get x squared minus 1, and that's equal to y. Now I'm just going to use my inverse function notation to rewrite this. So I have f inverse of x equals x squared minus 1. So I'm going to think about my domain restrictions. You can always figure out the domain restriction by taking the part that's being squared and setting it greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, that means I'm just going to have x is greater than or equal to 0 because x is what's being squared in this function. So now let's go ahead and graph this function. So we have the square root of x minus 3 plus 2. So, so the domain you can see here, it's going to start off at x equals 3 and then go to positive infinity. And then the range, the lowest y value is at 2, so it goes from 2 to positive infinity. Now let's go ahead and find the inverse. So I'm going to start off by replacing f of x with y. So we have y equals the square root of x minus 3 plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and switch x and y, so we have x equals the square root of y minus 3 plus 2. And now I'm going to work on solving for y. So one thing you always want to remember, and this is going to come up in our um, equations lesson, is you want to isolate the square root, okay? Because I know a lot of people look at this and want to go ahead and start squaring things, but before you square, you want to make sure the square root is by itself. So I'm going to start off by going ahead and subtracting 2, because that's the reason the square root is not by itself. So I have x minus 2 is equal to the square root of y minus 3. Now I can go ahead and square both sides because my square root is actually by itself. When I square both sides, remember I need to square all of x minus 2, okay? Because the whole thing is being squared. So that's going to give me x minus 2 squared is equal to y minus 3. Now I just have one more step to get the y by itself. And that one more step is to do the opposite of minus 3 and just go ahead and add 3 to both sides. When I add 3 to both sides, that 3 is going to stay on the outside because this is all going in the order in which I did these operations, right? Because you can see here, I started off with x and then I subtracted 2. Then everything got squared. Then I subtracted, um, sorry, then I added 3 to both sides. That's why that plus 3 is going to stay on the outside because that got added after I took the square. So now when I write the inverse, my inverse function is going to be x minus 2 squared plus 3. And I'm going to add in my domain restriction. I can figure that out by taking that part that's being squared, okay, that x minus 2, and then I can set it greater than or equal to 0. 
If x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, I can basically solve this inequality by adding 2 to both sides, and I get x is greater than or equal to 2. So this is going to be my inverse function for all x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so that's the inverse. Now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here I went ahead and plugged in these values, and then I got my points so I can create the graph. The domain is going to go from 4 to positive infinity, and the range is going to go from 0 to positive infinity. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and find the inverse of this function. So when you find the inverse, remember we replace f of x with y, and then we just go ahead and switch x and y. Then we're going to solve for y, so we start off by squaring, and here we can do that because the square root is already isolated. So when we square, we get x squared equals y minus 4, and then we add 4 to both sides, so we get x squared plus 4 is equal to y. So the inverse function is going to be x squared plus 4, and that's going to be for all x greater than or equal to 0. So remember, to find the inverse of a square root function, you're going to switch x and y and then solve for y. Remember that the inverse of a square root function is a quadratic function, so we have to include our domain restrictions.